Me, Mr. Aang, our math wizard's grace, in numbers realm, he finds a space. Equations unfold with his skillful hand. Okay, so this is 5.5 .5 mini project, third quarter PTA. My question is, has, mis uh, Mr. <laughs> has men's college basketball scoring changed over the years? So Roman numeral number one, big query public search. Big query sandbox. So again, the goal of this project is to get you guys, we've been working with BigQuery, how can you get data sets from there, take some information out of it and put it into spreadsheets because it's a little bit more user friendly. And eventually tomorrow, you'll have the whole class period to kind of work on your own data set. When you guys think about your own data set, everyone say, not like a teenager. Don't think like a teenager. Don't think, oh, like, how many TikTok views did my friend have? Like, that's too specific. But you could be more general, like, um, how many people use social media? That's very generic, right? Think like an old person. Okay, so I'm going to go uh, sign in BigQuery in the Explorer pane. We're going to type in NCAA underscore basketball. Okay, number two. Uh, right below the Explorer box, click on Search All Projects. You can move this little tab right there. And of course, you want to expand this. And there are two data sets we're trying to locate. Uh, number one is called NCAA Basketball Data Set, which is right here. You expanded it. And then we're looking for NBB Men's um, Basketball. Okay, when you do that, I got stuck here. There are three of them. But if you hover over it, we're trying to look for one that says what? Historical what? Tournament game. So that's this one right here. Okay. Um, three, this is the table we will use for our query. Number four, do a preview of the uh, um, of what we just clicked on. So we'll click on preview right here in the middle. And then you have 2,117, right? Okay, so we're taking note of the different column names. So I have, I don't know, days from Epoch. I have no idea what that means. Okay, wind seed. This is uh, the NCAA tournament in March. Um, they're going to give a seeding, a ranking. So usually one's good, 16's bad. Um, What other information do we have? Okay, maybe this is who they lost to, the sixth seed, which was Oregon Beavers. Okay. Uh, number five, open up a new query by hitting the big blue plus sign right here. Okay, I told you guys you could type it all out or just go to the spreadsheet I had. Pasting, processing. Okay, there it is. And then we try to press run, but obviously we start seeing red exclamation marks. And then it says unrecognizable name, date. Did you mean day? Hmm. Raise your hand if you overcome this wall. Okay, talk to people around you. 20 seconds, ready to go. Why will this not run? How can we fix it? Oh, so this is not recognizable. I have to pick one of these. Which one did you pick? Game date. Highlight it. Okay, how do I know it works? You can go below. <coughs> and you can see that now, look at your partner. Determine who has a shorter hair. Shorter hair to the longer hair person. What am I getting from here? What does this query get us? Talk to each other, five seconds, ready to go. It's pulling a query about something, about game dates, yes? 
What is it telling it to do? So I'm specifically doing something with the data, and it says it in the where clause. So class, it's pulling a query about what? Seasons after 1987. Bigger than 1987 is something like 2019. It's not going to 1974, not 1944. Okay? That's what it's pulling for us. Okay. Roman number number two. Query to the spreadsheet. Then it says seven. On the bottom right, click Save Results and then click CSV Google Drive. Here's Save Results down here on the bottom right. <clears throat> and I want CSV Google Drive. Click it. Export job started. This might take a while. Number eight. Then, when it finishes, download and click on Go to Drive. So I go, go to Drive. Again, if you are behind, you can follow the steps along here. Again, shout out to uh, Mr. Smith from Loera. He created most of this. Okay, now we need to click Open With and choose Google Sheets. Here on the top here, we have a CSV file, and I want to click Open with Google Sheets. Okay, now we have the Google Sheets open, number nine, on the first page at the very bottom. We need to change the title. Double click on it, NCAA Tournament. Nineteen eighty-eight to 2017. You can also write your name in there. Okay, go ahead and turn the page. I'm on the back side, Roman numeral three, spreadsheet cleaning. Number 10, now that our data is in Google Sheets, we will need to do a little cleaning of our data by first selecting the row number one, so this is a column with letters, row number one, you're going to click on it and make it bold and underlined. Bold, or some students realize you can just go to the search menu and just type in bold. Underline it. Okay, so last period, someone came up with the solution of using a border, but you realize that it just makes a line there. So we want the word underlined. So again, you can either do underline. This menu bar is cut off, so you can click on the three dots. And then, um, never mind, not there. Someone said control U. Very good. I also use old school format, text. I have bold and underline. And there's a shortcut, control U. There you see bold and underline. And now it says also freeze the row. Someone said, can I just type in freeze? That probably works. I usually like to go to the menus. Class, you see freeze? There it is. Okay, freeze up to one row. Let's just say you make a mistake. Let's just say you do two rows. You can drag. So what that does is so that I keep scrolling down. Are you following? and I can freeze that. Now, if I want to move that, you can just click and hold this and move it up, okay? So that was number 10. <clears throat> number 11, select all the data in the sheet and center align it. Uh, someone said select all is control what? A for all, or just click in the top left of this blank box. Select all the data in the sheet and center align it. So if yours doesn't have it, you can click on the three dots in the top right. Align, and then we went centered.
Okay. Number 12, rename the two columns from when school NCAA. Okay, let's say I don't want to really look for it. I can find it. Class, what's the shortcut for find it? Control F. And I can just type that in and it'll, it should leave me there. When underscore school. So that was column E. Change them to um, just win underscore school. So basically click on it. In the formula bar, I'm just going to delete the last part. And we're going to do the same thing with lose school. There's my lose school. Column H. Click on the formula bar. And I just deleted it. Next, we name the sheet at the very bottom left to rename NCAA, whoops, too many A's, tournament underscore 1988-2017. dash Number 13, finally select all the cells and then go to data. So at the very top, I have data, sort range, advanced range, advanced range sorting options. Click on data has a header row, so right there. What that does is it's going to change, it has names. Okay. And select first, so this is kind of like multiple things, season, so this is season, and then A to Z. Then add a level, add, click the button, um, add a level for round, so we already have it. You can just click on it and find it. Round, Z to A. That's descending order. You can hover over it and it'll tell you. And then add one more level for wind seed. So I'm going to click on add and then look for wind seed. A to Z. Okay, Roman numeral number four, spreadsheet pivot table. So you can press, I don't know, what does that say? Sort. Sort? Sorry, my almost cut off. Okay. So now, uh, number 14, next, select all of the cells and go to insert the top. Pivot table, and it says into a new sheet. Press create. Okay, this next step is where I got kind of lost uh, last period. So under rows, uh, you're going to select season. So you can do this in two ways. You can press add and just look for what it's asking for. Or another way you can do is over here, you can drag it to where you want it. Okay, so you can choose drag it or just press the word add and then search. So it says under rows, select season, rows, we have season. Under values, let's go under values, Let's use the add function. It says select both win points, win points, and let's add another one. Let's do the drag method. Lose points. So I'm clicking, holding, and dragging. And I'm putting it under values. 
So you'll notice if I zoom out, notice that they are underneath the appropriate one. Rows underneath the season, and then values we have uh, win points and lose points. Okay. Then it tells us in number 15, use the average for each. So where it says summarize by, you're going to look for average. Class, which one? Okay. All right, you'll notice as you were doing those, uh, it changed your data. All right, I'm going to close it. Should I keep it white background or black? It's my favorite app. It's called Dark Reader. I add it to every web browser so that I get dark backgrounds. Okay, number 16. Center all of the data within their cells. So I'm clicking on... And then I'm going to go to um, the three dots. Oh, I don't need it. It's right here. Remember, if you hover over it, don't click on anything. It should tell you, like, align. Then that's where I want to center. Okay, then it says rename the two columns win points. So just highlight, delete, and lose points. Okay, select cells B3 through C33. So here's B3. And I want to go to C33. Now, um, I'm hesitant to use the drag handle because I think it'll just repeat that number all the way down. Yes? So I'm going to go down to C33. And then what button do I press on my keyboard? Everyone say shift. So I'm holding down shift, then I click. And now I have them highlighted. So I clicked on B3, then hold down Shift, and then right-click with my mouse and C33. Can someone tell me a different way to highlight those cells? You dragged it? All right, Noel. You're live. Don't mess it up. You said drag it, right? Click what circle? I did click it. Oh, you're saying just click it. Just drag this? Yes. Oh, I learned something new. I learn, you learn. We all learn together. That was fun. Thank you. And then this says go to format, number, custom number format. Custom number format. I think it's at the bottom. Okay, so you don't have to go all the way down there. You can, but you'll notice that this one is rounded to the tenths. Do you guys see it? You could type that in. If yours doesn't show up, just go to custom number format. I didn't know how to do this, so the students told me last period, just type in the number 0, 0.0, .0 and then that pops up, so you click on it. And what that does is rounding it to the tenth, which is one decimal, one value to the right. Okay? Apply. And now it's rounded all of those. Number 17. Select all of the seasons and win points and lose points in the sheet. So select all. And go to insert. So now we're going to insert a chart. You can insert a chart in two ways, pressing insert or three dots, and then look for the picture. I'll just follow the directions. Insert, chart. A uh, boom, boom. Uh oh. 
up above. Okay. And customize a chart by changing the vertical axis. So customize is over here. I want the vertical axis. This is where lying with data comes from. Everyone say lying. Like t not telling the truth. Uh, if I wanted to say that the scoring has not changed much, I'm probably going to make it very thin. So I can do something like this. Look, class. There is no difference between the scoring between the losing and playing teams. It's so exhilarating. They're off by like maybe like one point. But if I squish the numbers now, uh, 44 maybe? No, can't see it. 65? Uh, we're better. What's the max? 80. Sorry. Uh, then I'm trying to stretch it out and basically say that, hey, there is a bigger gap. Okay? So on there, 55, 90. Okay. Number 18. Title the chart. So close this part. And go to chart axes titles. Winning and losing point averages, comma, 1988 to 2017. Uh, center the title and add a light background. Uh, chart styles. Uh, background color. Someone shout out their favorite color? Pink? Light, not bright. Light. Light. It's pink. Close enough. Okay. Um, it should say number 19. Do you guys see under conclusion? We're on number 5. For the last step, add a couple of sentences below your chart describing what you see in your chart. Um... I also write number two, that should be number 20, have your name and period. I also tell you to write the question, so let's write a question. The question I have the title of my page, I said, um, has men's college basketball scoring changed over the over the years, question mark. Okay. If you want to change that, you can change the width of the column. You can also highlight it and go over to text wrapping. And I wanted to wrap. Wrap. Okay. I'm just going to click a random box and write my conclusion. Um, in the year 2000, the difference between the scores dipped because people were scared of Y2K. Were you guys alive at that time? No. They were scared that some computers could not roll over to the year 2000, so they, they thought anything electronical was going to crash. Okay? Okay. Um, so basically, you guys are going to do the same thing. And I said, um, look, at your, look at your paper, guys. I'll go to my Google Doc.
Uh, eventually, you'll turn in a spreadsheet, but I said, you're basically going to do this. You're going to write your own question, write that on your spreadsheet, and where did you get your data? Okay, the easiest one is to use a BigQuery public search, okay? So going back here and just randomly type in something. So I want to type in something that I'm interested in. Boba. And I press search. Do you think anything's going to come up? I don't think anything's going to come up. So nothing comes up. We're okay? So this is where it gets very really dangerous because then you're going to spend your time searching for too something too specific. So I gave you a link. You can just type on type into Google too. It's called Dataset Search. And I want to show you how you can get lost. And this is why I think you should just pick stuff that's a big query. So if I type in Boba, it's going to give me a bunch of data sets. Okay? And if I click on the one that says Kaggle, now this one says zip file, so I'm a little bit weary. I want to find one that has something called a CSV. Do you guys see it? Okay, so if I go here and I click on this source, I don't see a CSV file on here. Are you following me? I'm, 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 I want to really focus on Boba. I really love it, but I can't get the data. Does this make sense? So don't spend your time going up down that rabbit trail.